I'm going to review what's in this box, which says junk tick. Can you guess? So they were going to send me a couple of things, but one of the things they were going to send me wasn't actually ready yet. They were still doing the English translation for the menu system and stuff like that, so they're going to send that to me later on. So in the meantime, they sent me this. As you can see, it's an LC meter. It's the LC200A. Tells you menu stuff, but doesn't actually mention specs anywhere. Maybe it's somewhere else. I don't know. Anyway, let's get this thing open. So it's got different power options. You can power it from AC, USB, mini, um, or one of these barrel jacks, which is uh, 5 volt, 1 amp for the barrel jack, which is that side. Well, that says AC 9 volts, 500 milliamps. So that's 9 volts AC, and that's 5 volts DC. Well, that's already confusing. Um, <laughs> there's a little clip lead thing, which is also a bit strange. Not normally these for this. These little clips like this, these are usually used for Kelvin leads. Because you then you get a single contact point right there at the tip, you know, where you get all the connection. So I suppose this is kind of right, but it depends on how you're using this thing. Surface mount capacitors and stuff, maybe? Yeah, I thought that would be a bit strong for it, it might actually crush the things anyway. USB A to Mini. And a standard pair of crocodile clip leads as well. Puzzled by this power supply thing though, that's a bit interesting. Yeah, so we'll check these in for now. Maybe, I'll check it out. And I think it also takes batteries as well. Yeah, it does. You can also take batteries. So you've got a few different ways of powering it. You can power off batteries or off USB or an AC supply, which may or may not be AC 9 volts. That is strange. <laughs> I think I'll be typing this up just to investigate this part of it. Then we'll turn it on. This is the tear down first, just to make a change. I just want to find out what's going on with this AC adapter thing. Which one's labelled wrong? Is it the wrong charger or is it something else going on? That's really what I want to find out. This has got some little bushes in here. What's this? To adapt to screw sizes. Weird. Anyway. Which side comes off? Hmm. I think that's all the screws. Okay. It's actually marked LC200A as well. So we've got the jack on the side comes in. I'm puzzled by this. Is it AC or not? I don't think it is. I think I'll take the whole board out to find out and track it. But we're going to side going to this track here. Which is kind of style grounded too, actually. See that? It comes down and then joins onto the air. It's like style grounding. That's interesting. So, but that says positive, negative. Mm hmm. And why the wires that around? <laughs> We've got the black wire on the positive and the red wire on the negative on these jacks on the front here. Okay, I guess it's because these plugs are default wired the wrong way around. No, oh, well, it's internal, it doesn't really matter, I shouldn't really see it anyway. Just weird. It does come down to the diode, there's a diode there, and that one goes over to this diode. I don't know, maybe it's half bridge? I don't know. <laughs> it's odd. So the switch here smarts AC DC on a switch, which is interesting as well. So maybe it switches between this input and that one. I don't know, but maybe DC is also running off battery, but when I go... So I've got the plug into power now, right? This has got power on it. So... 
that's an on switch. That's now set to AC, even though I've got a DC input. I think it's just an off switch. I think it's just incorrectly labelled on the casing. Maybe it's like a reused case. Anyway, let's test this thing out. So, let's just go straight to measuring some capacitors. This is a 200 pig fairy cap. Oh, right now, yeah, I'll do this with it. Measures 228. Now, I haven't done any zeroing, so maybe I should do a zeroing first. Let's take this back out. And let's actually... Um, do I have a short? I might have a short here somewhere. Hmm. You have a short. Well, a short is obviously for inductance. Zero it like that then. Although, I'll zero it like that then. Or I'll zero it like that then. Okay, you have to hold it down till it's finished. Yeah, okay. Let's try again. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. That's good. Actually, it's better than the better model mirrors I've done. Okay, let's try a 1 nanofarad, and obviously these are standard spacings, 19mm or 3 quarters an inch. 1 nanofarad, yeah, slightly high, but okay. Not perfect, could be better, but it's not bad. 20 nanofarad, okay, it's up there by a fair bit there. 620 picofarad out, but yeah, it still says 20 nanofarad. Let's try 1 microfarad. 1.02. So it is reading slightly high on everything apart from this 200 picofarad, it looks like. Okay. But it is not bad, actually. It's fairly close. So let's try a 10 microfarad cap. That's measuring 5. Let's try in high capacitance mode. High capacitance mode is now showing basically 10. Look at that. So obviously it needs to be in the correct mode for the capacitance size. Now it did mention that in the little pamphlet that came with it. Well look, there you go, it's showing exactly 10 now. What does it say? Small capacitance is 1 picofarad to 10 microfarad. So this is right on the top end of what should be readable in a small capacitance mode. But it couldn't read it. So that's slightly interesting. But on that range it's looking perfect. So let's try 82 microfarad. See how things are this. Obviously, it's charging up the capacitor and, and measuring. So I think it's creeping upwards. 73 seems to be where it stopped, though. Looks like it. That might be about it. So that's down by 9. But capacitors can be a bit funny like that, can't they? Um, you never quite know what you're really going to get from them. Because they're not that precise in some cases. Like these electrolytics, so they're not that precise. Here's a Sunzan brand one, so that's not the best brand. <laughs> Let's see what this one does. 100 microfarads straight away. And that's what it is. This one's actually doing alright. Here's a 1000 microfarad. Let's try this. 906. 10% down, but that's not unusual. Could be the capacitor itself. Okay, let's try 15,000 microfarad. Fourteen point four millifarad. It works. It can read that too. Nice. Now let's go back to capacitors because I just discovered something here. You've got this function button here. If I push this down, we see a frequency. So in this case, it's saying 67 kilohertz, which is interesting. Let's change to a different capacitor. Let's go from one microfarad to one nanofarad. There we go. That's doing 417 kilohertz. Maybe it's a resonant thing, I don't know. Should try to try and find a manual. So I'll plug the short in on inductance mode and yep, it's measuring zero inductance. Let's find an inductor. So I don't have any standard inductors. I'll have to get some one day. Go with the standard capacitors and standard resistors I've got, but anyway, this is a one micro Henry, apparently. Um yes, it's basically one micro Henry. It's not finding it. So maybe I need to re-zero the inductance mode because it might be going below zero even though it's showing zero. Let's just actually re-zero this. We'll try it again. There we go, that's slightly better. 
obviously the leads themselves will be doing a bit of indulgence and where these are positioned. So it's slightly low, but it's there. My suspicion here was correct about the calibration point. Let's try this one. This is supposed to be a 470. Measuring 400. Interesting. Okay. And this one here. I don't actually know what this is. This is just some kind of filter in data. What do we get? About 10 micro Henry. Yeah, that's believable. So it's interesting that 470 was a long way off. Now, is that because I should be using high inductance? Let's try that one again with the high inductance mode turned on. It's measuring 0.4, so not really any different. Yeah, interesting. So this has got my DI5000 out, and this is showing 450 micro Henry on this particular device. So it looks like this may be a bit out. I trust this more than this, certainly. Let's try this one, which is set as almost 10, wasn't it? It said 9 point something. There you go, 10.9. And this one here, which is also reading slightly low. It's 0 0.9. So yeah, I think this is actually reading low on inductance. It will, all of them are reading low. So another test we can do is look at this function button. What do we get here? 224 kHz. Is that the frequency that's actually using the test at? I wonder. Now that's why it's got such a low reading across all these inductors, because the frequency is too high. If I measure this unit, or this particular inductor, on my other meters, I showed you on the DER already. I did it on the East Tester as well, and I changed the frequencies on that one. I should have done the DER. At 100 Hz, I'm getting 470 exactly on this. But at 10 kHz, I'm getting 430. So, obviously, frequency dependent. So it depends on what frequency this is at. And if this frequency is correct, that's much higher. And that could be why these readings are much lower. So I thought I'd get the Brian one out, because this can do frequency at millivolts. This is convenient, because it's right sitting here right next to me right now. So let's actually stick this on here whilst doing a test. And we're getting 219 kHz on display there, with 227 millivolts AC as a test signal. So if I try and hold these on, then to push that button, see if these frequencies match. They pretty much do. So what it says on screen's very close. Yeah, it basically is the same. So what it says on screen for frequency does match what it's actually outputting. So that explains why the error is there. So the summary of this thing is pretty straightforward really. Capacitance looks pretty good. I mean, Inductance reads low because the frequencies it's using. Maybe if you're aware of that you'll know, but if, I suppose that's why they put that function on there so you can actually see what it's doing. So you actually know what frequency it's running at. Whether that's just like its resonant frequency or whether it's something it's trying to actually intentionally do, I don't know. Thanks a lot, Juntech, for sending this to me. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it, if you found it interesting. Catch you later.